Nigerian Supreme Court has finally ruled that Namdi Kanu never jumped bail. Lawyer Ijimako. Lawyer Ijimako added that the Supreme Court has put to rest the controversy surrounding whether the agitator Namdi Kanu jumped bail or not. Interesting. Welcome back to Prospect Channel TV. Thank you for this having you here. If you are just joining us for the first time, please kindly subscribe, share, and like. Thank you for always stopping by. Barrister Aloy Ijimako, the special counsel for Nambi Kano, the detained leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, has reaffirmed that his client did not evade bail in 2027. The legal practitioner has certain that Kano had to flee Nigeria to seek refuge outside the country when soldiers invaded his residence at Isama Afaruku Ibuku Abia State on September 10, 2027. Ijimakon made this known on Saturday in a statement titled Re. The Supreme Court has finally settled the matter that Mazin Namdekano never jumped bail and that his bail should not have been revoked. He added that the Supreme Court has put to rest the controversy surrounding whether the agitator Namdekano jumped bail or not. Ichimako noted that the Supreme Court also clarified that Kanu's bail should not have been revoked. He said, it will be recorded that Consequent upon the, the later military invention of his uh, royal and ancestral home in Umwaya, Abia State, in September 2027, Mazen Kano was forced into Hezai and thus did not attend his trial on the next scheduled date and thereafter. From then on forward, to June 21, when he was renditioned from Kenya, uh, Kenya to Nigeria, there has been a robust public debate as to whether he jumped bail or not. As of counsel, I have joined in this debate and always made it clear that in Namdekano, in the unique circumstances of the military invention, did not jump bail. I had also written well publicized legal treaties, maintaining that this self-evident truth will be proved and confirmed in court in due case of time. The first judiciary confirmation came in January 2022 when, in a landmark judgment, the High Court of Abia State declared that the said military invention was a flagrant violation of Kano's constitutional rights, consequent upon the courts awarded him one billion naira in damages and public apology. Following this judgment, I had issued a public legal notice warning all and sundry to henceforth seek and desist from peddling the falsehood that Namdi Kano had jump bail, whereas vast majorities of the mainstream and social media had compelled, complied. So malicious traducers and elements from the federal government persisted with the defamatory bill jumping narrative. Ultimately, on the 15th December 2023, the second and the final judiciary confirmation brought closure to this bay jumping saga. When the Supreme Court in the Federal Republic of Nigeria versus Inamdi Kanu ruled that Kanu never jumped bill, the details of the judgment quoted verbatim are uh, as follows in verbatim. The respondent Inamdi Kanu was on bail and therefore in custody of the law when his home was illegally invaded by heavily armed military officers of the appliant, that is the Federal Republic of Nigeria, causing him to flee from his home and the country to secure his life. In the face of such an attack, 
it was responsible for him to flee to secure his life and physical well-being. That is what any normal and reasonable human being would do in that circumstances to preserve his life and physical well-being. It is glaring that the consequences that attacked were intended or forcibly. This is not arguable. The appliant officials knew that their invasion of the respondent's home caused him to run away to secure his life and physical well-being. Yet, during proceedings in the pending criminal case against him, they applied that the bill be revoked, that a warrant for the arrest be issued, and his, the, his shorties forfeit their respective bail bond, and that his trial in his absence be ordered because he had jumped bail and is not in court to stand his trial. But they knew that their legal actions made it, their illegal actions made it impossible for the respondent to be in court for his trial. In a situation such as this one, where the prosecution has taken extra judiciary actions against the defendant in a pending criminal case brought by it and made it impossible for the defendant who is on bail to be in court for his or her trial. It is wrong to treat such a defendant as having jumped bail in the sense that he is running from prosecution or running to avoid prosecution in the pending criminal case in respect of which he was granted bail. The respondent did not intentionally and knowingly fail to appear in court. It was therefore wrong and malicious for the appliant that had caused his respondent, the respondent to flee from his home and country to secure his life and that had therefore caused his own unavoidable absence from court to inform and thereby deceived the trial court that the respondent had jumped bail. On the basis of this deception, the appliant applied to the trial court for an order revoking the respondent's bail, forfeiting the amount securing the bail bond of his shorties, and an order issuing a bench warrant for his arrest. It is glaring from the record of the proceedings in the trial court that it granted the said order spread for by the appliant with knowledge of the fact that the respondent absent from court was caused by the invention of his home by army officers of the appliant. Therefore, the trial court knew that the said extrajudiciary and illegal actions of the applicant made it possible for the respondent Namdi Kanu to be in, in court for not to be in court for his trial, that the respondent absent is not intentional or deliberate absent, and that the respondent is not running from persecution or running to avoid persecution. In the light of the following, the trial court acted unfairly and without rational and illegal justification justifiable basis by his decision revoking the respondent bill for fitting the amount securing the bail bond of his shorties and his order issuing a bench warrant for his arrest. The orders were made on the basis of the false assumption that the respondent joined bail. It was on this base of the order of arrest and respondent obtained on, under the false pretense that he jumped bail, that his extradition or rendition from Kenya was carried out. Emmanuel A. Agen, the Justice of the Supreme Court, at pages 10 to 13 of his concurring judgment, 15th December 2023. So guys, in, in all this wahala now, Additional to ruling that Namdi Kanu never jumped bail, the Supreme Court also held that the federal 
uh, high court should never have revoked his bill that the persecution wrought grand uh, deception on the courts on the bail jumping issue and that the bench warrant that triggered Namdekano's infamous extra ordinary rendition was obtained by deception and should never have been issued. For the foregoing season, I employ the media members of the public and pertinent public officers to abide on by the judgment of the Supreme Court and Air Force cease and desist from pending or publishing the first defamatory narrative that Nam the Kano John Bill, the statement added. So guys, we've all heard it now. Nam the Kano's lawyer said there is nothing like Nam the Kano jumping bill. You say because the federal government they go they went against you know the agreements they made. This man was granted bill and you came after him, you know, to his house. So what do you expect him to do? He should open his eye and see you finish him. So guys, let's hear from you. Kindly share your thoughts below the comment section. If you're just joining us for the first time, please subscribe. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Thank you.